Okay. Hello, everybody. Can you? Hello, sir. Great. And recording has started. Uh, so, welcome everybody to day three of this learning track. It's Textilers Artificial Intelligence Learning Track. Last time during the last class, which I, I hope those that were not around during the last class might have all you know, gotten access to the recording, we talked about conversational AI and I showed you and explained what it is like building your conversational AI solution. Remember during the introduction, we talked about conversational AI, we talked about how you can get um, what it means, the difference between a chatbot and a bot. And during the last class, we just I showed everybody what it's like we did one of those solutions. And, and then I asked those in the class to work on a sample project or build their own bots. I don't know how many persons I know. Um, I don't know if he's still on the call. OK, he dropped off. Tamu was on the call and I, I think Adamu was also on the call, right? Yes, I was. Great. So were you able to work on anything from um, the little assignment I gave in the last class? Um, I went and watched um, the Microsoft Azure AI Fundamentals like exploring computer vision. I, OK, great. So um, what did you learn? What were you able to figure out from the little research you did? Um, the computer vision is an aspect of AI where you, the AI is made to perceive the world visually through different things like cameras, and there are different, like multiple types of computer vision um, problems that AI engineers and data scientists and solve using a mix of custom machine learning and I forgot the exact name, but it's something solutions. Cool, great, um, great. So did any other person take some time to go through the learning part? Did anybody? OK, so I guess um, nobody did. So for this class, we're supposed to work through at conversation, sorry, computer vision. And I mentioned that I would try to get somebody to help take that class, but he's not available to take, or he was not available to take the class. So instead of computer vision, what we're going to be doing in this class is machine learning. And machine learning is the first module um, if in the learning path. So that's what basically we'll be talking about in this class. So I need all of us to more of you know pay attention. We'll try to go as fast as possible, like as fast as possible because of time. So we can cover a lot of concepts um, in this class. And in this part of Azure, the A Azure AI fundamentals path. So just before I get started, I would like to ask for those on the call, especially for um, Franca and um, Joy, I need both of you to really participate. Um, then Adamu too, whenever, because this is going to be an interactive class. Um, we're going to be asking, I'm going to be asking lots of questions. The machine learning module on Microsoft Learn contains three different parts and I'll be talking about these three different parts but because of time we will not be able to cover all three different parts and if you remember at the beginning I said for you to be able to write the exam successfully for you to be able to pass you need to own your learning so don't just wait for it to be time for class and that is the only time you remember Azure AI or that is the time you remember artificial intelligence or that's the time you remember something related to textilers or, or, or Microsoft exam. 
you get. So at the end of each class, go learn more over the week. I know you have tight schedules, you may have tons of other things to get done, but try to find out time to learn. I'm a mentor. I won't teach you everything. And I'm all, I would always repeat that. I would not teach you everything. I'm just here to guide you, not to teach you everything. So please try as much as possible to study as much as you can for this exam so that you can pass it successfully. Um, so in this class or in today's class, I'm going to cover first introducing you all to what machine learning is. And then we're talking about the three major parts of machine learning. Uh, you have the regression models you can build in machine learning. You have the classification models you can build in machine learning and your clustering models. There are two major parts of machine learning or your machine learning models, and you have your unsupervised learning and the supervised learning. We're going to be talking about these two major parts and then categorizing these major parts. Then categorizing these three different things we'll be talking about into these two parts. I can see Tamu has joined the call. Uh, so Tamu, were you able to do any research over the week? Um, I was able to, with the link you sent, I was able to go through the um, Azure portal. I tried to do what you did last week, but I couldn't complete it. Okay, are you facing any challenge? Yeah, the subscription. Sorry, I missed that. The subscription. Okay, the subscription. Thanks for bringing yeah, that up. I don't know how you went up. Yeah, so I have to chat with you up on WhatsApp to ask. Okay, I, I'm not sure I saw your message. Did you by any means send the message and I probably lost track of no, it? No, no, no. It was a direct message. Oh, okay. Okay. I would attempt that to the group. I'm oh, sorry. Okay, so at any point in time over the week, if you have any questions, we now have a WhatsApp group, so you don't need to come over to Microsoft Teams anymore. Be sure to ask your questions in the WhatsApp group, and I will try as much as possible to respond to them. Okay, okay. sorry. Um, please. What I don't have, I'm not on WhatsApp. Okay. Yes. So which platforms are you on? I, I use Teams. You, you can still reach out on Teams. I'm not saying I'm, I'm not saying you can't reach out on Teams, but I'm just saying it makes for us to for easier communication. Yes, I understand because I sometimes you don't used to be online. No, so I, I always check Teams regularly. Like okay. this specific tenant, I'm on multiple tenants, but for this specific tenant, I check at least once, twice, or even more every week. Okay. Yeah, so send your messages there. Okay, I remember our last conversation, I said I'd love to hear your questions. Yes, yes, yes. I yes. Sorry, I, for, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I forgot. So, so it's left in your hands now okay. to ask your questions. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. OK, great. So anybody has anything else to probably talk about just for diving? OK, so if there are none, we'll next moving on to Azure Machine Learning. And Azure Machine Learning enables you build your machine learning solution. To some extent, I won't say totally without writing code, but to some extent with our writing code, you will definitely need to make use of your Python program language. We will not be touching that in this in, in throughout this you know learning part, this learning course. Um, but then just take notes that even while working with local development tools, you might at some point need to write code to deploy your your machine learning models or to make it even better look at the azure machine learning designer we hope we have some time to cover this great so let's quickly dive in um start off by talking about machine learning 
what is machine learning. So I'll be muting myself now and opening the floor for all of you currently on this call to tell me individually, one after the other, what you think machine learning is. So what comes to your mind when you hear of machine learning? Who would like to start? I'm currently muted, so it's over to you all now. Okay, so, um, I think machine learning is a process by which um, a system acquires data from human activities and um, processes. The system uses this data that has been acquired to imitate um, in process, a particular process. As a result of the process, it um, gives us feedback or that results we want. I'll give an example. Uh, Chinese Go uh, has a game they call Chinese Go. So, with the use of artificial intelligence, um, to design a system by which um, you could play a game, you could play the Go. It's like a, a game of chess. So they designed a system that could play that game, and they called best Go player in China. Uh, I can't remember his name and check one of those documentaries. At the end of the day, the fact that the entire system um, defeated the best goal player, that goal player has um, records, I think, um, um, records in goal playing. So the system was able to defeat that um, goal player. How did it happen? So, Whatever process or technique this Go player applies in the game, the machine learns that and uses a more advantageous um, procedure counter. So you give him, it takes that trick and he applies in other form. I think that's what the machine learning is all about. So the machine, the computer system learns something and brings out. Thoughts. Great. Thank you very much for that, Samu. Who would like to go next? Um, let me try. Um, machine learning is when computer systems are able to learn or adapt to situations without us giving them explicit um, explicit instructions um, by using things like algorithms to analyze and do and draw patterns in data. Great, thank you very much, Adamu. I, I love the fact that you mentioned data. Uh, so, Franca, I can see you, you're muted. Yes, OK. Um, OK, machine learning is a study of uh, computer algorithms by the use of data. That's cool. it. Hmm? Great, thanks. Uh, so we have Joy left. Hello? Yeah, we can hear you, Joy. I don't know it all, Fando. Yeah, no, so what do you think? You don't have to know it. Like, what comes to your mind when you hear of machine learning? Okay. I'm coming. And you don't have to search it on Google. <laughs> no, no, no. Um.
I can't really say no. Sorry? I can't really say now. Okay, so when do you want to say it? When I'll, would you raise like to up, say it? I'll raise up my hand. Oh, you raise up your hand? Yes. Because I'm actually going to say the answer now. Oh. So that's the reason why um, I wanted to hear everybody's input. But not to worry. Mm? Mm. Not to worry. Um, let, let me not put you on the spot. Okay. Mm? So let me explain what machine learning is. Again, uh, for as simply as simple as possible, two keywords, machine learning, it's, I think that should give us a basic idea of what is happening, right? They say somebody is learning. It's like your machine going to school, your machine going to a university, right? That's what comes to our mind over here of machine learning for the first time. Now, I'm going to show you something, and I really hope you remember this. So before I show you what I actually wanted to show you, machine learning has to do with you making use of data and trying to find relationships between the different parts of this data. In most cases, you are using, just as the word implies, it's learning. You are using it to make the machine understand something. It could be probably to predict something. It could be to classify something or it could be to tell you whether this particular thing is um, is doing this or belongs to this category or not. Now, don't forget the keyword here. Machines learn with the use of data. So for the example that Tamu gave of um, the chess uh, solution, the bots, the robots that was built that beat all other players, it worked with tons and tons of data. And so it tries to find a common feature, a common thing between these different data that has been fed with, unlike humans that would just work with instincts. Do you understand that part? Do we get that part clear? Did you get that part clear? Yes. Great. Yes. I believe no, you can still. Sorry, can you go over that again, please? Okay. So I said machine learning has to is a process of train your machines as name implies machines are learning your machine is learning you are training your machine in this case it's not just something else to mention it's not just your it's not machine machine it could be an application it could be um a a, a solution so when we talk about machine learning we're not just talking of robots don't think of robots don't think of all of that tools physical tools it could be any of those digital tools do you understand now what basically happens is it works with data it works with data now with that data it is able to find common features between the different parts of the data and then once it's able to find those common features it is able to say oh okay this is what makes this, this, this is what makes B, B, this is what makes C, C, M, C. Do you understand? Okay, yes, thanks. Great. Now, you remember at, in the first class, I played a video for each section, right? For each of the, the tools, um, for each of the parts of artificial intelligence. And for machine learning, I played a video that had this. I don't know if you can still remember. Can you all still remember? Yes. Really hope you can. Yes, right? yes, yes, oh, yes, yes, yes. Great. And I told you there are different species of flowers. So let's say, for example, we have a botanist, and this botanist has different species of flowers. These are the different species of flowers. Um, so you have bellies, perennies, you have 
notice there are two types of belly spirinis. One has um, is colored more of colored with blue, and the other one is blank, more like a white um, background. Then you have different types of tulip, tulipa. You have your rosa multiflora. Now, these are three different types of flowers, but they had different they are of um different species like they are of they are not the same they are not exactly the same i hope you get that part they are the same species of flowers they are the same samples but they have some features that make them different do you get now what the botanist would do at this point is to name them according to how what they are and those are the names those names are known as labels it gives them labels when that's giving them labels the machine learning model this is your data now what the machine learning model would do is it would pick all of these data and impute them so you have imputed them into um, the system it comes with what we call an algorithm an algorithm is not a big grammar what it basically means is it is more of like code more of like um codes that make something happen. I think that would be the easiest way to explain what an algorithm is. Lines of code that explains or that tells something to do a particular thing. Now, what the code, the lines of code that have been programmed already would do is it will try to find relationship between these different, um, um, these different flowers. So again, I am using algorithms as set of code because this is tech. It might not just be code outside tech. It could be rules, it could be anything. But in tech, there are set of codes that helps accomplish a specific purpose. Now, once it has done that, we have what we call a model. And this is a model. So it has trained it and we now have a model just the same way your human sees something goes for a class an agriculture class and sees these different flowers and stores them upstairs that's exactly what has happened so next time when a flower appears what would happen is with that model that has been created that data that has been imputed it will be able to say, oh, OK, I remember this is Belly's perennial flower. Do we understand how this is working? Yeah. We get it, right? Yes. No, not yet. Um, just tell me. Not yet. No. Could you go right again? Okay. Uh, okay. So um, let's try to do this quick. So you have a bunch of flowers. I said machine learning has to do with data. Do you know what data is, right? Yes. Do you know what data is? Yeah. Yes. Great. Your rows, your columns. It might not just be rows and columns. In some cases, it might be pictures, it might be videos, it might be um, speech notes, voice notes, it might be a form of speech. But in this case, we're making use of flowers. Now you have tons of flowers in our data set. Right? Tons of flowers in our data set. When there are lots of data, it's, it's called a data set. Now, you have tons of data in our data set. That is these different flowers. So, this is a whole data set. 
in our data set, we have how many types, how many species of flowers do we have? In our data set. Yeah. Three. We have three species, thank you. Three different species of flowers. What we do is we give a name to each of these species if they don't already have a name. That is, if the data set did not come with a name, we give it a name, more of like a label. What the machine learning algorithm, the code that has been programmed does is it picks all of those data and then uses it to train itself. Once it has trained itself, it is able to know, oh, okay, once a flower looks like this, it is, it, this is the name. Once a flower um, looks like this, it is, um, I think it's Bellanis, per Bellis Perennis. Once it looks like this, it's Bellis Perennis, or if it's looking like this, it's a tulipa or that. Do you understand now? Um, I think that was Frank, right? Yes, thank you. Yes, thank you. So that is how you, your, your machine, machine learning works. Now, like I mentioned earlier, there are more of machine, different types of machine learning techniques. Um, remember, I said there are two types of machine learning. Can you still remember the two types of machine learning I mentioned at the beginning? Can anybody still remember? Um, Can reinforcement you learning. Sorry? Reinforcement learning. Okay. I'm so that's right. Um, anybody would like to? Sorry. I'm not completely. There are reinforcements learning. Um, I know I've heard like it's a type of machine learning. Okay. Sure reinforcement. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So that's a. Uh, should I say more of like an advanced, probably intermediate? Yeah, but it's also a type of machine learning. It's also a type of machine learning. It is that is where, yeah, that that's where your um trying to remember this. I will remember um deep learning. That's where deep learning comes in, under reinforcement learning. But then, for these fundamentals, we're focusing on supervised and unsupervised learning. Oh yeah. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. So that, those are the two I mentioned, supervised and unsupervised learning. And under supervised and unsupervised learning, for uh, supervised machine learning, you have, sorry, let me go to the next slide. For your supervised machine learning, um, you have your regression. And what regression basically has to do with, or basically is, is you are making, you are trying to predict things from your data. You are trying to predict things. In most cases, in fact, all the time, your regression models work with numbers. Works with numbers. So your regression model is a supervised machine learning model, and it works with numbers. It could be probably a, a price, it could be probably sales or something else. Now, in this case, we are going to, in this session, or we are going to look at, sorry, I went backwards. We are going to look at an example. Notice from this data set that we have 
This is a data set of a bicycle rental company. If you notice in the X axis, you can see it, right? I guess you all can see it. Yes. No, sir. Yeah. Okay, great. Just wanted to confirm that. So now, what this organization wants to do, it's a bicycle rental company. They want to know the number of bicycles they give out on a specific day. There are lots of things that can affect the rentals of bicycles on a specific day, right? But yes. what they want to look at is the weather condition. So on a rainy day, on a sunny day, on a cloudy day, how many rentals do we have? And that's where the X axis, the X axis of the data sets. You see, you have your um, your cloud and the sun and all of that. Temperature. All the numbers, the first 56, the first 61 and the likes. Now take note, there would be more factors to consider for renting your bicycle. There could be type of bicycle. There could be um, location of the rental. There could be the size of the bicycle, right? But what this rental company wants to focus on is weather. How does weather conditions affect rentals of bicycles? So what, when working with your machine learning, when building your machine learning models, remember to pick one specific part and not try to pick everything. And that doesn't just apply to your, when building your machine learning models. Generally, when building your tech solutions, you pick one single problem instead of trying to solve multiple problems. And then in the second part, you can see the number of rentals. So on the day when the temperature was 56, probably degrees Celsius, you had 115 bicycles that were rented out. Do we understand what's going on here? Yes. Great. Now, what we're going to be using is the number of rentals. That is a major part of this because that is going to, um, that's what we're going to be using. That's a major part, number of rentals. Now, what we are going to do is we're going to divide this data set into two parts. And when in the introductory class, I mentioned that you have a training data set and a testing data set. Can you still remember? Yeah. Can you still remember I mentioned that at the beginning when explaining what machine learning is? Yeah. So, what we'll do? I've divided it into two parts. Notice something that we did not divide it equally. Again, I repeat, we did not divide it equally. We gave it a higher number as training data sets, that is to train the model, and then a lower number to test it. Why? Because training is important, not so. Am I right or wrong? Can you repeat what you said? I said what we did, what we did is we divided our data set into two parts. And I mentioned it at the beginning during our introductory class. Then machine learning, we divide our data set into a training data set and a testing data set. If you notice, what we did is we gave more columns, more rows and columns for training, while we gave fewer for testing. The reason is because training is important than testing. For those of us in secondary or who, who were um, 
can still remember how the secondary school was. You remember there were lots of assignments before an exam or before a test, right? Each week yeah. you were giving assignments, assignments, assignments to yeah. train you before you had to write, um, you know, your first three weekly test. I guess everybody's from Nigeria, so I'm not speaking um, Latin. So training, you did your first three weekly test, did the second three weekly test, and then for the exam. So that's basically what's happening. We are giving more time for training and less time for testing. Do you understand now, that Adam? Yes. Great. Again, take notes. The machine learning, the Azure machine learning designer part is not the focus of this. It's not majorly a focus. What I need you to understand is how does machine learning work? Because this is where you are going to be at. This is where you are going to be focusing more on the exam. The machine learning is just the, the um, machine learning designer part is just for you to see how it works. Next thing we are going to do is with that training data set, we will then um, do a call. We we'll use that training data set for visualization. To basically find the goal of this is to find common features to find something common. Do you understand? Yeah. For those of us who like mathematics and for those of us that don't like mathematics, at one point we did graph. Right or wrong? Right. And I guess this image should be very familiar to you. Not so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it is familiar, right? Ladies in the house. Yes, it is. Great. Now, what this enables us to do is we're trying to find okay, what is the what are the what is something common between all of these? And then what we do is do this, you know, your normal line that you draw that connects. Um, I know in mathematics, you have to find the specific one that connects three dots together, right? Or has it changed? I don't know if it has changed. But then hasn't it hasn't changed. OK, great. So I'm still correct. It's easier for us to find to know, OK, and predict the next parts once we have done this. So I've plotted X and the Y axis to find the appropriate section. Good. Now, if you notice from this um, graph or this plot that we have drawn, you notice that the higher the temperature, The guess um, yes, the higher the temperature, the higher the number of rentals. Am I right? Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm right. Oh, yeah, correct. Oh. Yes, I'm correct. So the higher the number of rentals, sorry, the higher the temperature, the higher the number of rentals. Beautiful. So that's what I've been able to do. I've been able to find out that the higher the number of rentals, again, you are the machine. You are a human, but then you are the machine. We are thinking like the machine. That's what the machine sees. The machine now sees, okay, so the higher the number of rentals, the, um, sorry, the higher the, num the temperature, the higher the number of rentals. Do you understand? Yeah. Yeah. Now, since it's a straight line, It is called a linear regression. Hmm? It's a straight line, so it's called a linear regression. Do 
do we get? Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. Great. Mm-hmm. Now, in your graph too, um, is you need to find the point where both sections meet, where both lines meet, more of. And for that, we sorry, 35 is that section. Am I right? Where those lines yes. intersect? Yes. Cool. Okay, so at this point, have I lost anybody? Joy, are you still with us? No, not me. Yes. I'm fine. Okay, cool. Tamu, did I lose you? Yeah, we're together. No, 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 we're here. I don't know if Joy has unmuted. Joy. I'm here. Okay. So we have found that. Oh, sorry, I accidentally muted myself. So I found that point where more of like the release, the, intersec- the intersection. Now, um, oops, sorry. You all can still see my screen, right? Yeah. Yes, you can see. Yes. yes. I think I went back. Now, so what we're trying to do next is we're finding um forgot what was this the slope. Yes. But we're finding the slope now. And that's this line here. So we have picked it and uh, we can see from this section. Sorry, one minute. Now it's from this section, we can see that For every one unit, you can take uh, for every one unit of the temporary, sorry, of bicycle rentals, there is 1.5%. Um, for every one unit of your temperature, there is a 1.5 increase in the number of rentals, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Great. Great. So the machine has now been able to figure that out. And it's kind of easy for it to make the predictions. So then it does your days. Again, this is the point of intersection 35. And then for the X axis, that's 35. Um, to find the FX axis and all of that. Now it is able to get the predicted value, but aside this this specific one we have here, the predicted value is thirty five, um, and. The, the the fx which is equal to the five plus one point five x blah 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 then becomes the actual value. So from this we can see how the model is able to predict by measuring the difference between the predicted value and the actual value. In this case, we are able to figure out if there are any errors. 
Now notice this part. Let's see now. Let's test it out. The point we had was 35, right? That was more of like the interception. Am I right? Yeah. Great. Now, do 1.5 times the value of X. So let's say the first value of X to be 54. So 35 plus 1.5 times 34. And 1.5 times 34, I'm uh, sorry, 54, I meant, is 81, right? Yes. And when we add 35, it gives us 116. Right, which is close to the answer we have gotten, which is close to the you know the actual number of renters. Not so. Sorry, sir, I I don't get that. I didn't get that. Look this from here. We found the common section, and that is thirty-five. Okay. The intersection 35. And we said, <clears throat> okay, sorry. I, I think I'm, I'm, you're actually seeing the movement, right? I'm coming back to this picture yeah. now. And we said for every increase, one increase in the temperature, there is a 1.5 increase in the number of renters, bicycle renters, right? Yes. Which brings us to this. So if we are trying to find the temperature, all we do is 35, which is the point of intersection, plus 1.5, which is the increment for the number of um, uh, bicycle rentals multiplied by the value of X. Okay. And when we did that, the value we're going to be getting is 1.6, sorry, 116, which is very close to 114. So, not give you the exact features again because um, it might, it is not, it, but it gives you the level of like the errors and all of that. But it gives you a number closer to it. Did you get? I hope I didn't lose you. Yes, sir. Yeah, I, go, I, I guess, I guess. Okay, great. Now, these are mathematical terms. Um, trying to explain them as simple as possible so you can understand them. Um, so it is able to make that, remember again, it is a prediction. It is what a prediction. We are just saying this is how sure I am. It might, we are training it, it might be correct, it might not be correct. And that's the reason why I mentioned earlier that you have to focus on your training data set more than your testing data set. Okay, cool. Hope you get this. Um, so the next one is. So this is an, a, a basic example, a simple example of how it works, of how your regression model works, how you can train and how you can test a regression model. Now, in in um, your in a real world scenario, you will need a larger data set so that it is able to find more points, and then. Your something to note is your model, your model will never be 99.9% .9 accurate. You get so if you have from 94% to let's say 
98, that's if you are very good, then I feel you can work with it. But expecting 100% accuracy for models like this, uh, it's frankly not realistic. So that's the reason why we can't have the real, the real actual figure. But then it's giving us something close to it. Let's move on to classification model. Now, in classification model, I know you have lots of questions. You might have lots of questions since all of these things are new to you. But then don't worry, you can reach out and ask your questions so we can go quickly because of time. Now, regression, um, as I mentioned earlier, regression is a supervised machine learning model. I don't know if I explain what a supervised machine learning model means. In case I didn't, what it means is you are, it is a labeled, it makes use of labeled data. Like you know exactly what this is, what this is, what this is. Your numbers, and in most cases, makes use of, in all cases, it is usually numeric data. But for unsupervised, they are not properly labeled. They can be pictures, they can be, um, you know, they can be any other thing aside numbers. They can be words. Now, in classification model, as the name implies, you are classifying things. And in this case, what you are trying to do is find the probability. The probability. So is this, does this person have this or this? Is this a mango or an orange? What is the probability that this is a mango or an orange? Regression model. Take note of the keyword prediction. Classification model, take note of the keyword probability. And in probability, you are making use of zeros and one. Right? Yes, sir. One means that you are very sure. Zero means you are not sure. But in between 1 and 0, you have 0 0.5, which means I am not too sure, probably. So first thing we need to do quickly, we have our data, our data set, and what we are trying to achieve here is we are trying to know what makes a patient or what is the possibility of, so based on a patient's record, how do we know that this patient has diabetes or not? Is this patient diabetic or not? Zero means that the patient is not diabetic, and one means that the patient is diabetic. Do we understand? Yes, yes, sir, we do. Great. So as we did earlier, we divide our data set into two parts, your training and your testing data. And then again, remember, remember, you are not the one to draw the graph. You are not the one to do all of this. The model, the, the um, algorithm that has already been built does all of this. But I'll try to help you see what happens behind this scene. Now, after we have splitted it, the algorithm tries to fit in these different parts together between zero and one. So if you notice um, for different ranges given, the different range given in X, it tries to fit it in between zero and one. And then for any value lower than 0 0.5, like I mentioned earlier, it is it means that the patient from 0 0.5 to 1 means that the patient, sorry, from 0 0.5 to 1, not 0 0.1, from 0 0.5 to 1, that is 0 0.51, 0 0.52, um, all of that, so 1 means the patient is diabetic. From 0 to 0 0.5, Four nine 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 nine. However, the nine 
decides to go means the patient is non-diabetic. So this line at the middle more of like divides these different sections. Now, notice this S-shaped sign. I've talked about the line which divides it, and then you have this S-shaped line. It's called a sigmodial. <clears throat> what a sigmodial basically does is it tries to find the, 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 the minimum and the maximum. It tries to find the minimum and the maximum. Now, based on this, a model is created. And if you notice, um, so let me go back a little bit. It tries to fit it in. Notice it tries to fit it in. Take note of the difference. It tries to fit it in. You know, it's more of now fitted in based on the the, the testing data set. Do we understand? Once you have got that, it tries to predict. Sorry, not predict this time. It tries to find the probability. More of predict too, so, but this time in, in terms of the probability. Now, it has observed that from the first person, for the first person, the first case we had there, from the training data set, there is a 0 0.2 probability uh, that that person is diabetic. And from the second part, which is the um, non-diabetic section, it is 0.8% sure that that person is not diabetic. And so the result is zero, which means that that patient is not diabetic. But notice for the second patient that it has noticed that the second patient is 90%, it is 90 percent sure that the second patient has diabetes, 0 0.9, 90%, but just 1% sure that the patient is not diabetic. So it goes with non-diabetic, -di um, and so what's on the last two? Which is correct. Notice for the next one, it is not correct. Because again, the real data shows that that patient, based on this course, that patient is not diabetic, but then it says it is diabetic. So for that specific one, the model got it wrong. And also for the fourth one, it oh, got Richard it is raising up her hand. OK, sorry, I can't see your hands. Um, Rachel, please. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. I don't know what, what does P1 and P0 mean? So it is the prediction. The probability, sorry, the probability that it is a 1 and the probability that it is a 0. Do you understand, Rachel? I'm not sure, but I'll catch up with the record. <laughs> I don't okay, understand. So P1 means probability that it is a one, and we said one is diabetic. Probability that this patient is diabetic, the first one 20 percent, the second one 90 percent, the third exam um, one 60 percent, the fourth one 30 percent. P0, probability that this patient is non-diabetic, first one 18 percent, second one 10 percent, third one 40 percent, and the last one 70 percent. Do you understand? Yes, thank you. Now, in most cases, 
it has to be larger than this. If we have a larger data set, like I mentioned earlier in um, regression model, you should have more parts for your training before you do your validation or your testing. Great. Now, I'm not going to go further because, um, so this is just basically explaining what you have gotten. And from the results, we can see that there are 126 true positives. That is 126 that are true, true. What we mean true positives, true, true. The data said the person had diabetes. That is, sorry, this actual. The data said the person had diabetes, and the prediction model said yes, the person had diabetes. But in another case, the data said the person did not have diabetes, but the prediction model said the person had diabetes, which is in 21 cases. Here, the prediction model said this person does not have diabetes, but the actual data set said this person has diabetes, seven cases. The data set said 119 persons had, did not have diabetes, and the actual data set showed that 119 persons did not have diabetes. So that's the meaning of that. Um, so I think, I hope this is explanatory enough. I really hope it is. This is called a heat map. Uh, I really hope it was explanatory enough. Hello, Jacqueline. Sorry. I can hear you. Okay. Is this a supervised model? Because I heard you say something like that. Is this supervised model or an super on un, unsupervised? It's a supervised model. In supervised model, you have your regression model and your classification model. Now we're moving on to the unsupervised learning. And in unsupervised learning, we have clustering. Now, let's take an example. Let's use those flowers we mentioned earlier. Notice something from, again, remember I said for supervised, they make use of, they are usually numeric, unsupervised, they are not numeric. Now notice that what we are looking for here is the height. We have these different flowers. All we are trying to figure out is the height and the number of petals that each of them had. Two key things we are using, the height and the number of petals. So for the first example in our data, the length, that is the height, is six, probably inches, probably centimeters, whatever, or it is six. And the number of petals, we have one, two, three, three petals. Same with this. This has three petals. Then in a case like this, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight petals. Same with this. The length four four. This is a feature we have found out. Now, what we do next is we head over and plot the graph based on the different sections, um, the different figures that have been gotten. It, it is plotted on what we call a two-dimensional grid. More of like, you know, your boxes, not just as you had, um, what we had the x-axis and the y-axis. And then you have your different, um, <clears throat> have your dif the different um, dots, which present the results of the clusters. Grouping these different clusters into the different observations that we have. And if you notice, in this case, we are making use of 
three different clusters. So we're dividing you everything into three different parts. It's more of um, your set. How many of us remember set? Where you can have three different sets and then you have um, your intersection. So there could be two sets joined together. There could be three, three of the data sets once joins together, two joins once, once, and all of that. That's basically what's happening here. Um, okay, sorry, I meant here. So I divided into three parts and trying to find the proper relationship between each of them. Now for each of these parts, we have what we call a central. And a central is more of, of like a central point. So what we do next is, sorry, let me go back. So what we do next is we're trying to find the central point. Notice the difference. And sorry, I went to further. And then bring them together. So in this case, this is this these specific ones will be together. Notice here. We are taking them together. These specific ones, because they are you know central, take them and this one. Now what we'll do next is we bring them a little bit closer so they are nearer to each other. We continue repeating it, continue repeating this process until these different clusters, these different parts are stable. They are grouped properly. Until beds of the same feathers are grouped together which you notice here. So these two flowers are now grouped together. Same with this, same with these other parts. That's basically what happens in your clustering model. I hope that was clear enough. Uh, do we understand? Do we understand? Yeah, yes, but what um, software do you use to group them? I notice um, you've been, what software are you using? Is it the... Remember, it is our algorithm that is doing whatever is being done here. Yeah. Our algorithm is making all of this happen. So I am not making use of the software. I'm just showing you what the machine does, what the solution does. Do you okay. Okay, That's so the data, time. sorry, sorry. Um, okay, so the data sets, um, once you move it into um, Azure AI, you put it in the, it, it gives you this, this diagram, is that what you're saying? I am just, what I'm doing here is showing you, it would not run you through this process. Oh. I'm trying to help you see what happens behind the scene. This is more like of an example. A machine learning model. Yes. So, what the um, machine is doing that makes it bring out your results is what I am showing you. Do you understand? Okay. 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 So, you so could, you would could you use see orange this? To... Uh, would you see this happening? No, the... you would not. Okay, you are just okay modeling it. Okay. Okay. All right. Then. Okay. Yeah. So I'm just showing you how the machine learns. Just the same uh, way you learn in your uh, your, uh, your mathematics and all of that. That's the same way this happens. Okay. Hello, Jafet. Yeah, I can hear you, Rachel. And sorry, please, how did you get this uh, data that you are using for clustering? They are just, I mean, it, it's an example, like more of a sample. Okay. Great. Um, any other question?
Okay, cool. So, um, let's now head over to Azure Machine Learning proper. Uh, we don't have, let's hope we can. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to, I'll just walk you through what Azure Machine Learning basically is and leave you all to go practice yourself then. So that's one of like your homework to go and check it out. In the learning part, I'll share the specific module that covers this. We're supposed to build a classification model. So go and test out the different demos um, that are there and try to figure them out yourself. I'll show you how to get your Azure for free subscription. I won't show you, but I'll give you the link. Sorry, just a correction to that. So let me quickly get the Azure so that you can just practice yourself. Just go online. Um, I'll get the link for you. But then you can just head over to Azure for students and register. Um, so I'll copy in the link. And I'm going to share it here. Or oh, I can't see the chat. So I'm going to share it on the WhatsApp group since I can't see the chat here because I'm joining from another tenant. But then I'm going to share the link. It gives you $200 as your credit, which would give you the opportunity to explore all of these different things. Um, give me one minute, please. Now, OK, so let's take three minutes. We have three minutes more. Let's take three minutes to sip water while I'm away. Let's take three minutes to sip water, then we'll back by 5.45. Cool, right? Or do you have water beside you? You can just sip your water. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> I, I know it's bulky, but yeah. Don't worry, you understand all of them.
OK, so we're back. I uh, hope everybody is still here. Yep. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. So let's get over to Azure Machine Learning. Yep. And Azure Machine Learning basically makes it easy for us to get started with all of this. Hello, are you still here? Can I hear you? No. That's right. It's not here. Yeah. You muted his mic. Okay. Okay. He's not speaking. Hey, Hi, no, no, we can't hear you. Okay. He's back. So, we can hear you now. We can hear you. Great. Now. Azure machine learning basically <clears throat> what it's it is a cloud, as you know. Microsoft Azure is Microsoft's cloud computing platform, right? And it is Microsoft's cloud platform for building your machine learning solutions. Sorry, I'm just trying to reduce the background noise. OK, great. Sorry. Now, as you know, Microsoft Azure is Microsoft Cloud Computing Platform, and it is this my cloud computing platform we are using for building our machine learning model. It basically gives us. Um, now, in your on, on Azure, this is how it works. You need an Azure subscription, which Tamu was talking about earlier. It gives you access to the cloud. Inside the cloud, you have your Azure machine learning workspace. And inside your Azure learning workspace, you have to create what we call a compute resource. What a compute resource is like is it, it's basically like um, sorry, let me get this call. It's like you creating a machine learning model in the cloud instead of your computer. So compute resources. It's like you creating a machine learning gives you access to create a machine learning uh, model or what we call a workload in the cloud instead of having to do it in your computer. And then something you need to do is you, you need a part that helps you manage your data. Again, this is inside the combination of your Azure machine learning workspace. You also need a part within the workspace that would help you run what we call experiments that is those different graphs help you find the relationship and all of that and then you need another part that would help you train the model which you have done or which which you have built uh based on the data also need you need another part too that would help you publish this model you know to whatever platform that you need to publish it to making use of what we call http connections now i am going to open up um, azure and quickly show you that So I'm going to reshare my screen. 
I would head over to portal.azure.com. What I'm going to be doing is just creating an um, showing you how to create a work a machine learning workspace. Share this again. <clears throat> um, I guess you all can see it now, right? <clears throat> you all can see the new screen, right? Can you all hear me? Yes. 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 Great. 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 So this is your portal. And in your portal, what we're going to do is create a workspace. Um, so let's go over here. And here the machine learning, creating a machine learning, go back to machine learning and create. So I'll just open this up. It gives you the ability to create a workspace. Remember how we did it last time during the conversational AI class, where you have to create a um, where you have to create a resource group. I think I didn't save that resource group. I deleted it after the class. So I'll just go over it again. Textilers workspace name. <coughs> Textilers <coughs> ML. Um, West US. Container registry, we'll leave that part. You can just head over if you need to, but we'll just leave all of these and just click on review and create. And once you have done this, next thing we need to do while it is creating is head over to the machine learning studio, Azure Machine Learning Studio. And you can access it by heading over to ML. Dot Azure.com. All right. Yes, I. Um, excuse me, Jafton. Hello, Jafton. Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Um, what uh, site did you go first? Was that uh, uh, Azure.com? Sorry, I'm going a little bit fast. Portal.azure.com. Yes. Yeah. Was that the mm. link you sent to the WhatsApp group? No, not actually. So first, you will okay, need. Okay. Actually, to... I just joined um, the WhatsApp group. Oh, um, okay. Yeah. If you could so drop first, it again. Yes. Yeah, so first, you would need access to Azure for um, your an Azure subscription, which I don't think you have access to. Um, so let's see. Here. So to ask you to subscribe. Yeah, it's ask you to subscribe. Um, but it should be included. I guess I should have free space here. So it has been created already. Okay, so our workspace has not yet been created. So let's wait for the workspace to be created first. Um, sorry, this we can't go over this again. Um, please, I have a question. Uh, 
Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Please repeat your question. Um, I have a question. Yeah, I can hear you. Please repeat the question. Okay. How do you get to this uh, this place you are now, the Microsoft Azure? Okay, I said portal.azure.com. So again, um, what I guess we'll do is, because I will be going lots fast because of time, um, okay. need to jump on another call by six. Okay. So um, I'm trying to move very, very fast. I'll just have like four minutes. I just have so, like four minutes. Sorry, sir. Oh, okay. Yeah, I wanted yeah. to ask because I'm seeing the subscription does not contain any Azure machine learning workspaces. So that is because our um, workspace has not been created yet, as you can see here. Oh, deployment yeah. is still in progress. So what you would do, I think that was Franka asking that question. Okay, so deployment uh, reload this. You head over to portal.azure.com. In the last class, if you had, were there, I showed you how to create a resource. This time we are creating yeah. a machine learning resource. Great, so you can see it has been yeah. created. The other time was language. Yeah, it was the language. We headed over to language. Now, once it has created, you come here and you see it has shown now. Text style as email, and we'll get started. Do you understand? So it is taking us here. Um, and this basically is what the machine learning studio looks like should we get yes sir. great i don't expect you to follow me along just because i'm going a little bit you know lots fast um but then um, i just want to get the whole concept now notice three different sections um so let me go back here you can say to create yours you can decide to make use of notebooks. For those who use Python and R for data analysis and data science and machine learning, you know what you should understand what a notebook is. Just so I know, has any of us does any of us program with Python or R here or any other um, programming language? Uh, yes. You were saying something, Joy. <laughs> Don't worry. No, please say what of which language? Um, HTML, like Visual Studio. Yeah, HTML is a programming language, um, and is a great one. But the languages I, I was like focusing on were the ones used for building softwares. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yes. Uh, so for those who build softwares, they might at some point have come in contact with notebooks, especially those who use build machine learning models, either with C sharp, either with Python, that was our notebooks. So you can either decide to use Python to code and you know run all of your samples, or you can decide to make use of what we call an automated machine learning. So what of CSS? So CSS is for styling your web applications. Yes, to make it beautiful. And then. Yeah, so that is a whole different space from building your machine learning solutions. Okay. Yeah. I know that's what Yeah, I hear you. So I without you. <laughs> without coding, we cannot we cannot be able to deploy for machine learning. I'm sure uh, what I'm doing here is showing you the different um workspaces you can okay. use. You can interact with this machine learning workspace either yeah, by using either of these. First, you can make use of a Python environment. That's where the notebooks come in. You can decide to make use of an automated ML, um, the automated ML part, which we'll be using for this class. And then you could also decide to make use of the designer. We will be making use of the web version in this class. You can also make use of the command line. You can make use of the Python environment, as if you are making use of the notebooks. We'll be covering the web parts in this class. 
Now, notice I explained, um, and I don't know if you can still remember, I explained data set. Can you all still remember what data set is? Can you all still remember what data set is? Yeah. So, can somebody briefly explain what a data set is? And I'm sorry, are you hearing me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, I don't really know how to put it to a but a data set is um, it's containing like, okay, let me put it for example, it's containing the data of an organization of um, the, of what has been recorded about their attributes. Thank you. So it's majorly your data, your different rows and columns. Hmm? Different rows and columns data set brought together. Experiments, basically testing out uh, what has been done, running them. Um, then you have your pipelines, more of like the way they are arranged. And then you have your endpoints and all, that, all of that. With Azure Automated Machine Learning, sorry, let's go back. With Azure Automated Machine Learning, what basically does is works in. So I'll share another screen again. Let's go back to our slide. And what basically is happening? Sorry, is, I have a question. Okay, I'm all ears. Sorry, why 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 do you share on the screen? Like you have to go back and share. In like instead of sharing the desktop, then you can move from one place to yeah, another. multiple screens. I, I don't want you to get distracted. Okay, okay. okay. Other things that might pop up on the screen. Mm. No, I just want to know to like the reason why you are doing that. Yeah, it's pos it's possible to. Okay. It's possible to, but messages might pop up and then okay. you are no longer focusing on the class. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So the stores of messages don't distract you. Okay. Thank you. Great. So what basically happens is you give it your data, and then the algorithm that has already been built would run through that data and create a model for you. So that's basically what happens. What your automated uh, machine learning does. Let's go back. Now. It makes use of drag and drops. So instead of you writing code, you can make use of drag and drops, as you can see in this picture, just connecting the different steps together. So for example, I hope you can see this picture clearly, right? You have your diabetes data set. Then what the next step you do is you normalize the data set, that is clean it, remove the unnecessary rows, unnecessary columns, and all of that. Split the data set into two parts. Um, the training and testing, which I mentioned earlier. Then you train it, and then once you have trained it, you give it a score based on how well it was trained before you go over to test it and start using it. So all of these things is called a pipeline. Do you understand? Hi, Jafet. Do we understand? Sorry, Sorry. This um, diagramming, the the um the way the diagram is following, because it started with diabetes data sets, normalized data, then the arrow went to split data. Then that um, two class logistic regression, it just is coming from another place. And yeah. they, they both go to train model, then split data goes to score model and train model goes to, goes to <laughs> score model and they all end up in evaluate model so the third line that between that two class logistic regression and that split data to the end i don't understand 
Okay. So it is to make your, to train your data at that point where you have split data. I, I mentioned a lot that it's splitting the data into rows and columns, right? Right? Yes. yes. Um, sorry, did I say rows and columns? Rows and columns. No, yes, I didn't mean rows and columns. Nobody corrected me. Training data and testing data. I said to split into two um, parts, training and testing. Nobody corrected me. Oh, so everybody forgot. Okay. Um. So next thing is doing is these two class. It is making use of the two class logistic regre regression to classify it. Remember we said in regression, um, it is able to like it is it finds it's able to predict. Right? Is what is the difference between this and this? What is the um how are we sure this will be this? You get predict what the outcome will be. So it makes use of that two class prediction um to more of make that happen. Then um that's if you are working with regression then your training model that's why they, we added it um then your training models in your training model it trains everything comes together and it trains you know the model gets trained and then you score it but then you could decide to instead of working with your this part you could decide to skip it and go directly to scoring the model Do we understand? So, so, so sorry. So can we say that actually, yeah, on this third line, there is actually working on a both a supervised and an unsupervised model. Like going straight to from split that are going straight to score model. Is that can you say that is an unsupervised model? Because there's no training of the model. So uh, whether you're making use of supervised or unsupervised, at some point you would still need to train it the data. Do you understand? Yeah. yeah. At some point, you would still need to train it to ensure that it is working the way you want it to. Is that clear? Uh, clear a bit. <laughs> Thank you. OK, great. So, um, this is basically how it works. This is basically how it works. I really wish we could, I could show you, but um, again, because of time, I will not be able to show you that. But then I'm going to share a link um, with you all on WhatsApp. We can continue the conversation over there. So probably have questions and if possible, could walk around something, probably a video over the week. Not promising, but if you um, put enough pressure, I might end up doing that. So let's see if you would um, to run you through this. But then that's basically how it works. Um, so in this class or in this throughout today these are the important things we have covered we talked about what machine learning is mix it of data your machine is learning all of these data are in a data set and it is this data set that we use for you know the, the data in this data set is used for building a machine learning model we talked about regression for prediction classification for finding the probability. What is the probability that this is this? You are classifying things, but also finding the probability. And then clustering, um, which is an unsupervised machine learning, is basically enabling you to find the similarity between things. So what is the similarity in between things? Um, yeah, basically clustering. 
Um, then we have also seen what the Azure, how to run over your Azure, create your solutions on Azure using Azure machine learning. You first create a resource on Azure, um, create a workspace, sorry, a workspace, which gives you access to the cloud. Inside your workspace, you have your compute resource. Um, you, in, in your workspace, you have your um, data, which helps you clean your data and all of that, split your data. You have your um, services, which helps you deploy your data. Um, you have your, um, which did you mention? Um, who can remind me? Who can remind me? We mentioned five different parts, right? Who can remember? Let me leave the rest. Can anybody remember the models and experiments? So those are the different. Sorry. Yeah. No, I'm, I was asking what was the question. OK. I can hear you. I, was, I thought you we were asking a question. Yeah, I was asking a question, but nobody responded, so I just had to give the answer. OK. So yeah, so I hope so far what we have covered um, you all understand it, right? I'm going to share this link with you all. Um, so I think I should sh start sharing all of these links now. So that I don't forget. To. So any questions so far on what you have learned? Any questions so far? So again, I have another call. I'm already 15 minutes late for that call. Um, but I just wanted to ensure that I covered a lot of this with you all. Uh, so I'll, I'll, I'll share all of these links. And please, when I share them, try as much as possible. Again, you are the one writing this exam. So try as much as possible to complete all of the learning, ask your questions so you can pass your exam. It's a free voucher you're going to be getting. So please ensure you make good use of it and you pass well. If there are no questions, I guess we can end the class, right? Any questions just for go? Okay. Wait, I'm um, sorry, um, okay. Jason. Okay, yeah, you... on a um, machine learning, I don't really know much about machine learning, but I've heard some people talk about the different types of uh, model we have that they have supervised model, unsupervised model, and there's one other one too, making it three. Because in this machine, in Azure machine learning, you are talking more on supervised and unsupervised. So I'm asking, is there any other model included in it? Um, so you have your reinforcement machine learning models, which I think someone mentioned earlier. But for the sake of this class, it's a fundamental. So we're focusing on supervised and unsupervised. Okay, thank you. Great. Yeah. So um, do you have any question, Joy? Um, no. Okay. Let me check if I'm. Um... Great. So just